This is Bounty, the Atari Basic Podcast. The trick to learning, of course, was knowing the computer. And, of course, I just devoured books on what the computer could do and what its capabilities were when you plugged in different values into different places. This is Antic, the Atari 8-Bit Podcast. I'm Kevin Savitz. Ray Sitak wrote Name the Notes, a music education program that was accepted by Atari Program Exchange and won an APX award, but never appeared in the APX catalog. The program is, as far as we know, lost to the sands of time. He also wrote the program Keyed Up, a music education program disguised as a goofy game, which appeared in Antic Magazine, and Lightning Renumber, an automatic line numbering program that was published in Compute Magazine. This interview took place on January 30th, 2016. The Atari 400 was my first computer. Mm -hmm. And I bought it when it first came out. And it, uh, it was satisfactory for, you know, the games I was playing and using with my kids at the time. And, uh, of course, the keyboard was just a flat surface with raised uh, letters, so it was very hard to type and do anything uh, any, to any greater extent. So I bought an 800 and bought the uh, disk drive to go with it, uh, the, the floppy disk drive. And uh, I started writing some basic programs. I started learning basic and, and uh, writing some simple basic programs. Well, to make a, a long story short, you have to realize that those early 8-bit computers were uh, quite primitive, and when you needed something, you wrote it yourself. And so that inspired me a little bit to get into more programming, and I would very often try to find things that were interesting to program. Um, I uh, discovered Antic Magazine at the time and Compute Magazine at the time. Uh, This was, I believe, in, oh, probably the early 80s, 83, 84. And... um, I um, started writing some magazine articles and short programs because a lot of the programs that uh, were included in those magazines were type-ins, and I had a few of them accepted and uh, got uh, along in, uh, in with my kids, and I'm a musician. I'm a pianist and a piano technician. and I was interested in writing a program for my kids that would be like a flashcards for music. Yeah, at the time, there was a uh, an Atari affiliate. I'm not sure exactly what its affiliation was. Do you remember the ATX? APX, uh, um, yeah, Atari Program Exchange. Yeah, mm-hmm. and they sponsored a competition, and I took my basic program that I had written for uh, as a flashcard program for my kids. Um, I submitted it to them and it won a prize. I can't remember which level of prize it won, but it was uh, equivalent to a thousand dollars worth of computer equipment. And they just gave me a book and said, just pick out a bunch of stuff and we'll send it to you. Wow. Nice. So I, uh, I'm not sure what, you know, what, what place I was in. I might have been second or something. But I'm, I'm looking that up right now. I remember the prize. Excuse me? I said I'm looking that up right now while you're talking. Well, I'll let you know. Yeah, I'm not sure what the prize was uh, as far as the level, but I know that it was $1,000 worth of computer equipment. So, of course, I, um, I bought more software and more... Uh, 
more computer uh, equipment, such as uh, additional floppy drives and modems. And, of course, at that time, modems were very primitive, mm -hmm. and uh, there were some... Um, I, I can't even remember what they were called now. They were, uh, you dial a number and you... you the bulletin board systems? You called into... Bulletin boards, yes, of course. I just hadn't thought about it for just a long time. <laughs> and uh, so, um, you know, that was a lot of fun. And uh, so I used all this equipment to, to further my programming skills. and. Uh, for example, I uh, I wrote programs that would uh, combine the the sound systems. I was interested in sound and in getting exact frequencies. And with the uh, Pokey chip, I believe it was, is the, mm -hmm. the audio chip on there. That is that right? I That's think right. It is. Yeah. The, um, the it allowed for four different sounds, and you could actually combine the sounds and get two channels where you could just about set the frequencies precisely. And so um, I wrote programs that uh, I remember writing one that was for telephone dialing. And I used the tones from the touch tone phones to, to create equivalent sounds and I believe I submitted that one, and that one was not accepted. Um, I remember having some difficulty because one of the numbers wasn't exactly right. It was sketchy. I think it might have been hmm. a three because the frequency wasn't quite exact enough. But then um, I did uh, write a few other articles. I, I don't really remember what they were, but I... I the big one I wrote was a program that renumbered basic pro programs. Mm -hmm. And I had that, I wrote that in assembly language because you, uh, if you had a basic program in there and you wanted to renumber it, you could, uh, you could put the uh, compiled program and call it from basic, from a command, and it would renumber your basic program. So I uh, that was accepted and uh, published, was, I believe, in Compute Magazine. Right, that was Compute Magazine, October 1985. It was called. Oh, no, you've got it down. Yeah. Lightning Renumber for Atari. Yeah, and actually there were some bugs in it, and I tried to 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 get some of the bugs out, but uh, it was a fun program to write, and and uh, I had a lot of fun learning how to to do assembly language from from that program. Um, another program I wrote in assembly, and uh, this it wasn't published in the magazine, but if you recall, I think it was Antic that um, did a um, a disc that they would uh, send out, or even maybe include with the magazine occasionally, that would contain some programs on it, and I had submitted another music program that I did called Keyed Up. And it was a, uh, a key signature identification program that I wrote in assembly, and it was included on that disc. Right, that was... Uh, it was a little antic. theme. Uh, it was antic, antic. Uh, August 1988. Okay, all right. And that uh, that was probably the most... <laughs> Uh, difficult program to write and debug that I ever did because uh, I used a lot of scrolling and other techniques that I had to learn to do. And the trick to learning, of course, was knowing the computer. And, of course, uh, I just devoured books on uh, what memory, uh, what the computer could do and what its capabilities were when you plugged in different values into different places. So um, that particular program was a, a little bird that would fly back and forth. I had three different levels on it. And uh, it would fly over a fence, a Western-looking barbed wire fence that resembled a music staff. And on it, I had different key signatures between the, uh, between the uh, posts. 
and the bird was still supposed to land. It was timed on uh, as many as you could possibly land on and get correct. Uh, if it landed on a correct answer, you got points and it went on. If you landed on an incorrect answer, uh, the colors would reverse as if the sense was electrical and you got a shock. <laughs> But you were still you still survived, so you were able to get off and, and find the right answer. Hmm. So that was a little fun music program I wrote as well. Of course, I um, as sixteen uh, bit computers came on the scene, and of course, as the PC got the thirty two bit PCs uh, came out, things started the gaps started to fill, holes started to be filled, and I found uh, that I couldn't or didn't need to write so much. And uh, it was a little more complex in those in those realms. And um, although I did uh, try to learn C a little bit, I never really got very far with it. So that's kind of my story. And uh, if, you, uh, if you have any questions, just fire away. Yeah, I, um, I guess my question is, I have it in my records that Name the Notes was published by APX, and, and yet I'm not finding it in the catalogs. And I'm wondering if it's one of those things where they accepted it, they gave you your prize, and then is that when they shut down APX and at that point, and then maybe you sold the program to, to Antic um, at that point? I'm, I'm trying to figure out well, exactly what happened. program, I do not know what happened to because hmm. it was written, it, like I said, it was written in basic. So, right. Uh, it was an extensive basic program, and I know they did not publish it, but I don't know what happened to the program. In fact, I have not been able to find a copy of it. Uh, I, I do not have any of my Atari equipment any longer. So it was it was a fairly simple program. It put a staff, um, and I think there were several possibilities as far as selecting treble or bass or, or both. And it would shoot different notes out there with the pitch playing, and there, you were required to press the correct key for uh, for that note uh, to name it. Uh, and it was uh, you know I think I had several different timings and, and whatnot. And I literally had my kids as part of their practice session, sit down and do that for, you know, 10, 15 minutes or so. Nice. And your kids became musicians, didn't they? Well, they didn't. Ultimately, I have my oldest son, uh, was a, uh, excellent French horn player who, uh, went in, to uh, the university as a horn player on a scholarship, but um, did not find university suitable to him. And, and music is an extremely difficult field mm -hmm. to to uh, to make a living at unless you want to become, uh, to fill a certain niche in teaching. But um, he eventually uh, went into the National Guard and uh, went into the U.S. Army Band and did two stints in, in the band unit. Uh, so he did extensively use his horn play. I have uh, also two daughters. Uh, the older daughter is an excellent violinist, and uh, they all started out on piano. And that's uh, a very good start for any musician is to start on a piano and, and, and learn the concepts and then move to another instrument. That That's what I did. Nice. And uh, you, I found you at pianotechnician.com. Are, are you, are you a piano repair person now still? I am. Uh, I have worked for the University of Wyoming and for myself for over 30 years. Uh, I started out working for the Baldwin Piano Company and uh, I worked at Texas Tech University for eight years as a technician. I was always an aspiring musician as well, but it's very difficult to get into that field. And I only have a master's degree in performance, so it became even more difficult with just that degree. And with my family and the need to make a living and whatnot, I never really went any farther with my education. So. 
I moved to Wyoming, uh, spent nearly 30 years working here, and am now uh, retired, semi-retired, really. I still have quite a few private customers that I service, but I'm, uh, I no longer work for the university. I retired from them uh, about three years ago. Is that good? Yeah, that's great. I have what I need. Thank you so much. Right? All right. Well, I'm more than glad to, to talk to you about it. I mean, it's kind of a long time ago. I don't think about it too much anymore. Yeah. Um, but it was a lot of fun while it lasted and uh, learned a lot about computers. And I still am very interested in computers and and help my friends out with uh, troubleshooting and all kinds of other odds and ends and uh, enjoy that, doing that for my friends. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Well, if there's any other time you want to talk or ask me anything, feel free to call. Okay. Do it. All right. Thanks, Ray. Okay. Bye. Bye. If you enjoy these interviews and would like to contribute something, I encourage you instead to donate to one of our favorite organizations, the Internet Archive, at archive.org. The Internet Archive is a nonprofit digital library with the stated mission of universal access to all knowledge. They've done incredible things to preserve computer history, including hosting thousands of programs in an in-browser Atari emulator, creating the Wayback Machine, and offering full-page scans of countless Atari computer books and magazines. Make your tax-deductible contribution at archive.org donate.